Hey gang, welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. My name is Mike and it is, we're wrapping up this video. Uh, I'm kind of doing this a little bit backwards, but I want to tell you that this whole video was like two weeks in the making uh, just to get this grinder mixer that's going to make life so much easier on the ranch. We can put our corn oats and barley in it. We can put all of our supplements in there, which we're going to talk about today and, and mix it all together and then put it in a big bag like that and have it ready to go for our steers in our feedlot. We can use it to mix feed for the pigs, for the chickens, multiple things that we can do with this stuff. It's just, a, with this thing, it's just amazing um, what we're gonna be able to do and how much money we're gonna be able to save the ranch is uh, still unknown, but I can tell you we paid about $1,800 for this thing at auction and how we got it was a very interesting story that actually has to do with Brian and Cole at Sunny Farms in South Dakota. Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life, where we're not in Wyoming. We're actually in South Dakota, just outside of Mitchell, South Dakota. You might recognize this guy. This is Brian Sunny from Sunny Farms. Brian, how are you? I'm very good, Mike. Thanks I'm for coming sorry out. Sorry, they're a fly off. Yeah. Really right in my mouth, man. Yeah. I'm glad you have them here, too, because we've got them we sure everywhere. Do. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. Uh, Brian actually did me a big favor this week, actually, over the last month or so. We've been going back and forth. And on the ranch, you know that we've been moving away from the auction system and trying to get more direct to consumer. We've actually taken all of our cattle. They're all, uh, all going into a feedlot program. We're trying to do that as efficiently as possible. And one of the things that we really come down to is feed and being able to buy feed and process feed and do all the things that we need to do. And we're starting to work with FBN uh, on a feed supplement. And one of the things we have to be able to do is mix that. So we came to this conclusion that we needed to get ourselves a mixer grinder. Now, when it comes to uh, Equipment like that, they don't have that in Wyoming. Nobody's doing that type of thing over there. So I had to call somebody who knew what they were talking about. Couldn't find that guy, so I called Brian. And uh, Brian basically got me uh, got me going on yeah. what I needed to do. And, well, and, uh, and you know, this is a, a product that not only does mixing, but it does grinding as well. So when you get to the point where you want to grind your own corn or oats or barley, I know you talk about COB a lot, which right. is something that you guys use out there because you know it's all got to be trucked in and it keeps costs down if you can add some barley and oats to your corn right yep so this product here this Artsway 400 grinder mixer i kind of grew up on these because uh you know our local uh feed store that we actually own now ourselves and our neighbors used to have two of these and they'd rent them out uh to the area farmers so uh just real simple you know you hook your tractor up your pto and you can do two things. You can engage this, and then you can introduce your corn and oats and barley through this auger, which you can set out and swing out to fit wherever you're backing it up to and let this down. And this auger here will take it up into this area where inside here is your hammer mill. and. Uh, this one actually came with three screens. Uh, this, this big one here for ear corn, and this really small one for grinding chicken and hog feed. Right. And we'll just show you real quick here what these hammers look like inside here. So these hammers here are running at a high rate of speed, slapping it up against this um, screen and it's grinding it and this will be sizing it not as fine as you want for chickens but more for cattle right now if you don't want to grind anything if your products already grown and mixed you put it in your supplement bin here which takes it right in to the bottom of your cone and then it augers it up the top and it just continuously flows it so you get an excellent mix you can do both at the same time. You can be putting supplement in and grinding. But I think for what you're going to do, you just disengage this. So all you're doing is mixing with it. Right. Then once you get it up here, you can uh, shut your power takeoff on your tractor off and engage this lever. And then this auger right here starts moving, which is your unloading auger. You open this up how much you want to be coming out of there into here and then it goes up and out your unloading auger which with this handle can be cranked up swung around backed up to your 
your wagon or your little feed shed or whatever yeah, exactly. it is you got. So. so so this you found for us at an auction. Yep. And and it's uh you know what we say 1965? Yeah. So this it's, thing's almost as old as you and I are. Oh it's older than <laughs> No, it's almost as old as me. <laughs> almost. Yeah. Almost. I mean, it's actually in really good shape oh, for what it is. I can't believe that, you know, the beautiful decal Artsway's had forever is still there. Uh, it was always shedded. They made notes in the book, mm -hmm. in the owner's manual, on when they serviced it, when they turned the hammers once. Uh, the guy knew a lot about it. They used to have hogs at their place, so very cool. Yeah, it is. Damn it. Not rusted out, it looks like it's been very well maintained, so. One of the great treats that we have today is we have some folks over here. First of all, we have Cole. Hey, Cole. Hey. How are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? It's the first time you've been on our channel. Yeah, first time you've been on ours. Exactly, so it'll be a lot of fun to I've do this. I've been just kind of videotaping behind your back. And have you really? So one of the things that people always say is, you know, you need to go over and you need, you need to go hang out with Cole. You need to go pick up a bowl from mm -hmm. Cole. And they think we're neighbors. Oh. I think I think is part of the problem. But well, really, I mean, we're 400 States, miles apart. So it's not yeah, that it's not far, that right? big, right? On the map, we're like this far apart. Yeah. But uh, what was a five or six hour drive over here? Mm -hmm. Definitely worth it, though. And, and I do thank your dad for helping me out. And I don't know if you had anything to do with it, but no. <laughs> Awesome. Nope. I'm just here. That's well, you know, some, somebody's got to do that too. Yep. Definitely. These guys are also here. Now, this is Rachel and Travis, and these guys are here from Artsway. You guys see a lot of these um, things still out and working even today, 40, 50, 60 years later. Yeah, for sure. We, we go people places, and uh, people have new ones, and they still won't get rid of their old ones because they're still running great if people ever need anything. If something goes wrong, they always have a good, trusty one in the back of their shed still. So. <laughs> We get calls about it all the time, people fixing their, honestly, the same similar eras, right. getting new parts for them, and they're still running. And that, and that says a lot for you guys, because obviously this equipment is built to last and, you know, go through multiple owners and, and probably different um, situations as well. And I don't know, this might be the first one that's in Wyoming. I honestly have no idea. We don't see these kind of, this kind of equipment, we don't see, you know, any type of grain handling equipment, anything like that in Wyoming. But it'll be interesting to get this thing over there. And, and get it to work. Uh, one of the interesting things I like is that, you know, parts are still available for these old mm -hmm. machines as well. So if you can find them, they're in good shape, you can, you can get them up and running and be able to do the same thing that hopefully we're gonna be able to do with it. So. And say you need different screen sizes, we have those exact screens and whatever other size portions you need still too. And so it's a lot of easy things to fix and change. Very cool, very cool. What do you guys say we get this thing loaded up and take it to Wyoming? Sounds good. All right.
right, guys, we're back at the ranch. It's the next day. Uh, I actually ended up staying in Murdo, South Dakota, uh, South Dakota uh, for the night, but ended up back here this morning with this thing. And our goal today is to get it unloaded and cleaned up, greased, oiled, whatever we need to do to it. The nice thing is that we have the original manuals. We've got the original um, uh, repair records, all kinds of stuff for this thing. So it'll be very nice to be able to get this thing back up and running into an into full shape so we will uh, get to work on this and to help us do that we've got a guy here that probably remembers when this was built <laughs> easy uh, now no you don't <laughs> uh it's actually this thing is actually we thought it was a 1962 yeah which would have made it uh my about age. vintage <laughs> uh it's actually 1965 so this thing is actually younger than you are oh, it's almost new <laughs> it is uh 1965 arts way 400 mixer grinder um, that uh, we're gonna put to work here on the ranch and Jeff and I get to figure out how to make it work because I'm I, I kind of got a little bit of a walk through yesterday. I'll tell you what but uh, uh, It was fast. It was quick and it's gonna be a bit of a learning process here And there was even some stuff on here. Brian was like, I don't know what that lever does <laughs> So just pull it and see what happens. So we'll have fun with that So uh, we're gonna try to get it off the trailer as easily as possible. Uh, it wasn't that bad loading it up yeah. So um, we'll get it off. We'll get it cleaned up and get started on our process of making our own food for the animals right here on the ranch. So. They'll love you for it. I hope so. <laughs> it's a long drive. Jeff is grabbing the skid steer just uh, just like we loaded it up. We're gonna take it off of here. He's gonna hook it up first before we strap it, uh, before we unstrap it, so the darn thing doesn't roll away on us, but uh, we can get kind of started here. Jeff's gonna pull up and we just hook up to the pin. All right, you want me to give you the brief walkthrough as, as far as I understand how this thing works? <laughs> sure. Okay. So you have two settings. One uses your, your hammers, which are in here, for grinding. And this swings out. I'm guessing there's some sort of lock somewhere because while we're driving down the road. Oh, right here. And suppose this can go up and down somehow. Oh, there's this right here. You squeeze. Oh, yeah. And then that thing. all the way down to the ground if we needed to to get everything out and we'll be able to see exactly what that does so you have, your additives go here this is actually a dust collector um, so it collects the dust that comes to the top and brings it back through so oh. so it's not as dusty I guess and then back here this is your discharge this so, piece comes out swings around cool so let's uh take some of this apart and we'll start getting it opened up and ready to clean. Down. I'm going to have to dug it in for you. Oh, there we go. It. And there's our flywheel and look at all those belts. Serious belt. Yeah. Good. Then we can swing it around.
Alrighty guys, Jeff is gonna keep on working on getting this thing cleaned up and putting as much water on it to it as he can. Eventually we're gonna get some soap and stuff onto it. What I wanted to show you guys next was actually this stuff here. I'm gonna duck inside because it's getting just a little bit windy. But what we have here, actually the original paperwork that came with this thing in 1965. Now this is something that I love about getting some old equipment like this. Not only can you break out the Alcoda and get it cleaned up, but you also get this old paperwork that came with it. And uh, this is actually the flyer from 1965. The Artsway feeder, mixer, and mills. Take a look at this. So this is the one that we've got, the Model 400, which is apparently the top of the line for that year. Pays for itself while you process your own feeds easily and professionally from your own grain and roughage right on your farm. So this was actually a pretty big deal. Um, 95 bushels is what this holds, about two tons of feed, and uh, hopefully it will make things a lot easier for us as we move forward with our feedlot plans here on the ranch, as well as, you know, chickens and pigs, um, all that kind of stuff, we can actually start mixing our own feed. This is the uh, original operating instructions and parts list. This is something you don't see, come, doesn't come with your new Ford anymore. Uh, you don't get a parts list anymore. Uh, but even old, the old Model T, sitting right over here, actually came with a parts list. This one does as well. Um, the cool thing about this, and one of the things that I think is pretty neat, is the operating instructions are on page two and three. That's it, that's the operating instructions. How to run the dang thing. The rest of the book is all parts. What parts to order, where to get them. The uh, previous owner of this thing actually really uh, kept track of uh, records. 1978, new pulleys and a bearing plate holder and apparently some sort of bearing there. Um, new belts, they just wrote them right in the book when they got this new stuff. And then we also have another owner's guidebook, which is not so much the operating instructions, but more of a guidebook uh, for what different things do, how to store the machine, how to add in your supplements. You can put molasses in with it, how to load it, unload it, a little bit more detailed instructions, but and more importantly, lubrication points, which once we get it all cleaned up, lubrication is key. This thing is 57 years old. We wanna make sure it lasts for another 57 years. So we're gonna make sure we lube it up, get everything all ready to go before we even hook it up to a tractor and see if it works. Come here, Jeff. You want to talk about grease? Sure. All right. So, uh, really? <laughs> um, looking for the grease page. Lubrication. There we go. So, yeah, uh, proper lubrication is essential into uh, to maintain the efficiency and long life. We're going for another 57 years, so we better grease it up. Uh, lubricate it daily or after each 10 hours of operation. So, if you're running this for 10 hours a day, that's a long day probably. Is a long day. Okay, so basically we have pictures of all of our grease points. There's really not that many, so we're going to run through those. And then there's a few um, oil spots, but we're going to leave our oil can, the, the tin, tin man thing. Uh, we're just going to use WD-40 for that. So uh, that's mostly just doing chains and springs and that kind of stuff. So, all right, here we go. Time to grease. Okay, while uh, we're, Jeff is finishing up uh, the rest of the greasing here, we're going to run up to the top. I want to see how this thing actually works. I know that the uh, the grain, after it goes through the hammer, or grain, or corn, or whatever you've got going through here, I guess corn is a grain, um, goes through the bottom and then up and through. So it's got a vertical auger of some sort. But we're going to climb up there, take a look, and see what it looks like. Here's what we got. I can't really see it well myself, but... 
vertical auger brings the the grain or whatever hay or whatever else you're mixing up through this dumps it out through the top so it's just a continual uh, mixing process it goes back down to the bottom gets caught by the auger again and back up it comes so jeff all right Okay, so it's all greased up. You got to see what it looks like on the inside. We cleaned it all up. I mean, it's not, you know, brand new, shiny, shiny clean, but I mean, it's way cleaner than it probably has been in years. And we're now ready to get a tractor, hook it up, run it at low RPM, and see how everything works before we actually put some feed into it. So that's coming up next. Check out this. Uh, this is the old paperwork that, that came with this thing. Oh, yeah. Put on your spectacles. <laughs> Speaking of old things, <laughs> it's, I think it's cool, like even back in the day, Gilbert used to do this, where they would just write in the manuals, you know, what they were, what they were up to. But in 1965, um, you know, they've got all these old dates here. I'm guessing these, you know, they've got 66, 67, I'm guessing these are lube years, so I was wrong. 1978 appears to be the last time that it was actually um, lubricated or anything, but I mean, this is what, 65, so that's 57 years, right? Yep, 57. Math. So, yeah, and I think that, you know, being able to use this kind of stuff and, and uh, still use it for exactly what it was used for 57 years ago. Yeah. I mean, small farms that were selling, you know, beef and pork probably to their neighbors yep. at that time. So, you, but you have, a, you have a background in agriculture with, with your grandparents in Oklahoma. What did they do? What kind of farm did they have? They just ran livestock. Okay. My grandma had cows just that was all okay as far as i know and did they do like cow calf or what did they, did they sell them at auction did they finish any do you I have no idea i never asked really i'll have to ask yeah because it'd be interesting to know what they did because i like I, I look at like old farmers and i always picture it as you know hey we need chicken today we'll head down to the johnson's and grab a chicken and come back and we'll have chicken you know we'll trade them some bacon for yeah. the chicken you know and that kind of stuff that stuff that stuff is really interesting to me especially the old school um way of doing things i'm just making <laughs> but I guarantee you, I, I guarantee you, it cost more than what it cost in 1965. Probably a dollar or so more. Yeah. yeah. This one, um, I'm not ashamed to say, we picked up for $1,800, which is probably about what it went for in 1965. Would, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise, surprise me. me. Yeah. So I think uh, being able to, to continue on and use this thing forever is going to be a, a huge part. I'm looking forward to teaching Lincoln how to use it, or, or Grace, or Kenzie, or whoever wants to, you know, try it out and, and being able to feed their own animals and and really like being able to control what you're giving them because you go to yeah. tractor supply and who <laughs> yeah. knows what's in that stuff i mean you know there's ingredients lists but i don't know what trisoclinate 38 <laughs> is so being able to, to control exactly what we're giving our animals i think is a huge part in doing this redfield south dakota was where this was originally purchased jockhead i'm guessing jockhead county company company jockhead company jockhead co you gonna look that up i am <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if they're still in business? No, it would be cool. Let's right. see if it's still under warranty. <laughs> you haven't got a call on that yet? No, not yet. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure the warranty expired. Your warranty expired. is about to expire. <laughs> <laughs> be interesting. If you happen to know Jock Heck in Redfield, South Dakota, let us know. Maybe, uh, maybe we can do something with it. The the the. Whoever ran this thing probably the very first time, if you would have told them that you'd be looking up something on your phone right now, they yeah. would have been like, uh, how do you do that on a rotary phone? Take you forever to just type it in. Seven, seven, they, four. They are still in Redfield. The, the family is still in Redfield. Oh, really? Yep. So they had an implement company at one time. Counseling service. Oh, well now they do counseling. <laughs> That's, that's the natural progression from farming to counseling. That would be interesting to see if, if she's actually uh, related to Probably them. is. I mean, it's a pretty unique name. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. So uh, we're going to do something. It's even just as cool uh, it, it, to, if, you're, if you're a geek like we are. Um, taking an old piece of machinery like this, 1965 Artsway 400 grinder mixer, and we're going to pair it with another piece of old machinery that we have here on the ranch to uh, put them both together, at least from the same era. It might be kind of cool. They're just a couple of years apart in they age, are. so yeah, exactly. works out. So Jeff's going to go get that started up. I'll meet you back over here at the uh, nice, clean, newly, freshly <laughs> greased and oiled and everything else grinder mixer, and uh, we're going to put it through its paces. We're going to just kind of run kind of low speed and yeah. see how the whole thing works. Sounds good. Cool.
That's right, Jeff is on his way out with our 1962 International Harvester 606 tractor. It's a itty bitty guy, but it should be able to run uh, this thing completely. We don't really use it for a whole lot on the ranch. Um, we used to use it in the gardens quite a bit more, but Aaron and uh, the Edible Prairie Project, our nonprofit, actually got their own tractor, so we haven't had to use it for that. But I am very proud to be able to pair it with this thing. 1962 tractor to a 1965 grinder mixer. are now working. This thing's bringing grain up, dropping it off. Pretty slow. And dropping it into here. So now we know all that works. The only thing we have left to test is our uh, output here. And then we need to go up and check and make sure our vertical um, is working as well. So, we're going to bring this off, swing it around, and then we'll engage this thing to make sure that auger is working. The last thing I want to do is get a whole bunch of grain in here and figure out we can't do something. So, Okay, so we should theoretically engage this lever that should kick on the auger coming out so go ahead and kick on the PTO this thing will smash you it, uh, it's a hammer those hammers going around like that now we took we took out the screen uh, which actually sits right here because I don't think we're going to have to use it right away. But um, eventually we'll get to, to grinding our stuff. I think when you disengage that, it turns off the hammers, turns off the auger, so you can just use it to feed out. That so you have sense. this full, you don't need the hammers going. Yeah. You're just kicking grain out. So that makes sense. Everything seems to be working. We even got ourselves a little, a little nest came flying out of here. I don't know if I want to touch it. Probably <laughs> something in there. It is a bird's nest. Yep, look at that. Yeah. Bird's nest was inside the auger. Is that a bird? <laughs> oh, it's a feather. It's a, it's a bird of a feather? Well, Jeff's going to investigate it. Maybe there was a dead bird. Oh, look at that. You got an egg. Robin egg. Oh, little robin eggs. Poor things. Anyway, they were living in there. Um, they aren't anymore. And everything seems, I mean, honestly, everything seems to be working just it fine. Sure looks like it. It's about 98 degrees out here, so... <laughs> Um, we are going to let this uh, thing sit and rest here. We've got grain on the way. We're looking at another shipment of COB coming in. Once we get that, um, we'll be able to get it going through here, uh, mixing in everything we need for our steers, and that's where we're going to start. We're going to talk about steer nutrition coming up, um, what we're adding to the feed thanks to FBN and the feed analysis we've done, which brings around the reason to even need this thing, and that's to more efficiently feed our animals do it better. So there you go. Everything seems to be working. It's a beast. Not one computer chip Not to be one. found. Good and it works just fine. Fashion. Yep, exactly. This this links to that, and this links to that, and everything works. So, definitely very cool. Can't wait to use it. And 
right, we're back. I told you this this video was going to be at least week lo weeks long in the making. Jeff is back with us. Um, this is actually one of Jeff's daily chores, and that is to come over to here to this barn, which really doesn't have a name. We should just call it like the feed barn or something like that, because this is where we do um, all of our mixing and uh, preparing of food for the steers, which they get every day. Uh, Jeff divides their feed into two different feedings, so they get one in the morning and one at night. And that's what I was showing you guys back here is actually the cheat sheets that we use. Uh, the B team right now, which uh, if you saw our latest video, they just got selected. Um, they're getting 40 pounds a day and along with two pounds a day of pulp. And the A team is now up to 88 pounds a day along with four pounds a day of beet pulp. Beet pulp we use uh, to basically, it's a little bit of fiber and uh, we all know how good fiber can be, at least you do if you're over a certain age. And uh, that, that helps out uh, the steers with being able to retain uh, the feed that we need them to retain. We also have a very special mixture that we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes about uh, that's, that's actually made for us by FBN, Farmers Business Network. And it's a, a feed additive that allows them to extract more nutrients from the feed. Also gives them a bunch of vitamins and stuff that they're missing from our hay and from our supplementary feed that we give them to build that fat, that marbling that we're looking at. We call it graining, but it could be pretty much anything. You could actually finish them with cake if you were so inclined. So anyway, uh, what Jeff is going to do here is he's going to take us through how he would fix uh, food normally for the B team. So they're getting really. So they're so they're uh, they're they're getting about uh, forty pounds a day. Or at, well, they're getting forty pounds a day. So we divide that in two. So we're going to do their morning fixings yep. for today, and uh, Jeff is going to show us how he does it. So take it away. What I've done is I've teared out the scale so the bucket doesn't doesn't count now. Okay. I like to put the pulp in first. Put a pound of pulp, and then 20 pounds of corn oats and barley. And this was a pretty good video building this one. <laughs> this was uh, this was Matt's uh, contribution to the ranch. It was helping me build this dang thing. And pretty handy too. Now this should weigh about 22 pounds, 23 pounds. <coughs> Whoops. Oh, a little heavy. 26 That's okay. 26 pounds. They'll be happy. See, uh, on this bucket right here is 20 pounds. Ah. I've done that before. So the mixer is basic, well, that's what it is. It's a mixer. Um, this thing will do exactly what our new grain mixer will do, uh, just on a much smaller scale. So if you don't have that much to mix, these concrete mixers work great uh, for this kind of project. You just basically what you want to have is everything uh, equally distributed throughout the food. Also, one thing we have forgot to put in here, which is the, uh, the FBN mixture, which is back there on the four-wheeler. You want to grab that, Jeff? So this is where a little bit of math comes into play because uh, we are looking for 2.3% of whatever that is. So that was what, 26 pounds? Okay, so we just do some quick math. Um, this is actually pretty important. You wanna make sure that you do this correctly. So 2.3, whoops, wrong button. Ah, okay, hold on. I just said you gotta do it correctly and I don't know what I'm doing. 2.3%, so we're looking for 0.59 pounds, so about a half a pound of that stuff. Now, this is, uh, we're gonna talk more about this coming up when we get into the mixer because we'll have a tag for it and I can tell you what exactly is in it. But this is a, a specially uh, mixed, formulated mixture of, of food or additive that goes into their food that FBN came up with us based on our uh, nutritional analysis of our corn, oats, and barley along with our hay. So it's something that could change every single year depending on on how your hay looks or, or what, uh, what kind of hay uh, you've got and what you're putting up or where you're buying it from. Here you go. Half a pound. So let's take a look at this stuff. This is actually very fine um, crystals, basically. I mean, it's it's uh, who knows. Um, it's it's ground, obviously, and added in. Now, this is really important that we get this mixed throughout because we don't want one cow to get a big shot of this stuff. Yeah. So a half a pound of that. There you go. Perfect. 
I said 0.59, you got 0.55, but we'll call it close enough. I can put another <laughs> math. Math, another math. All right, that doesn't look like much, but this is actually uh, what is going to help them digest better and be happier cows. Concrete mixer cost about 300 bucks. Very cheap way to do this. Jeff is gonna plug it in the generator so we don't have power over here. And we're gonna fire this thing up, let it mix up for a little bit and, and get, all, get all turned. So I guess you could do this even if you're mixing hay in or anything else. I mean, you could add anything in here, and as long as you as long as you give it enough time, it'll get all mixed up. And, and uh, anything that's not too bulky, right? I don't know if you could add like molasses or anything to this. That would probably cause problems. It would stick but, to the mixer, right? And the other thing is, after you use it as a concrete mixer, make sure you wash it out really good, or else uh, you have other problems. All right, that looks pretty good. Now the tricky part. We didn't <laughs> add that much. Unless you fluffed it up. <laughs> How does that look? It was more compact in the bucket before, I guess. There we go. All right. So again, this mixes it up completely, makes sure that we've got an even distribution of everything, including the beet pulp, which is used to, uh, to kind of bind them up a little bit. And uh, of course the FBN additive that we want to use in there to, uh, to help them absorb this food and make it more nutritious for them in the end. So we're gonna just walk this over to the B team and get them fed. All right, they're out. They're still trying to figure this out though. Let's see if they come over and get a bite to eat. Boys? There we go. Well, I guess they'll figure it out. Yeah, they. I fed them last night and it was gone this morning, so they. So Takes somebody's eating while. it. Yeah, maybe that are deer are coming by. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are going to now move across the road. We're going to get out our new grinder mixer. We're going to show you the new way that we're going to do this. I'll, and this is our first time, so you know nobody judge. have our International 606 hooked up to our Artsway 400. we got a little bit of things, a few things to do here uh, before we're ready to start mixing. Really not that much. Uh, we pulled out the screen because we're not going to be grinding. We're just going to be mixing today. And uh, we have pulled out our input auger and get that done. And after that, we're ready to go. So this is our input auger. This is what's gonna take the corn oats and barley and put it into the mixer. Now, if you remember, I said that we were waiting uh, to get our corn oats and barley because we were out. We did get it delivered. We got it off the trailer and Jeff is grabbing it now so we can bring it over and put it in. And one last thing that we do need is our valve. Now this is called a fled bag valve. Uh, I found this at our feed store, purchased it, and actually I wish I had more, but uh, 
I haven't been able to find them online yet. Um, but this thing basically goes on the spout that's below the feed bag and somehow, if I can remember how, you open it up just like that. And you're able to control your flow, which I think is going to be pretty important today because we don't know how fast this thing picks up stuff or how fast it's going to move material through. So Jeff is bringing our bag of feed over. One ton of corn, oats, and barley is the next step. Okay, so underneath each one of these bags is a spout, and we're going to open that up. Now you can cut these open, but unfortunately, as Jeff and I have found out many times, uh, that if you cut them open, bad things happen fast. Uh, you can get way too much grain coming out way too fast, which will literally plug up an auger. So. Um, spout goes under. Thingamajiggy goes over. Right on the lip, in theory. There we go. Is it over all the way? Yeah. There you go. Try that. That should lock right on there. There we go. If you see us out here with shovels in a few minutes, that's what happens. Okay. So, COB is packed tight in there. Um, which is not great, but we'll make it work. So this is where we're gonna add in our pulp and our FBN additive. Okay. All right, let's fire it up, see what happens.
belt came off the... It came off all together? No, it just came off the roller. We're gonna have to cut that belt off or something. So the pull down at the end. We're going to pull down at the end. Okay, so here's our problem. We have our fee, our additive has, as the, the additive chute has something stuck in it. We're gonna have to take that apart and figure it out. But we still need to add our stuff in here. So we're gonna do it as we add the COB and we're gonna cut off that belt so it doesn't sit here and smoke the whole time. Surely not. No, just cut her off. Oh, you okay? Yep. I'll scream later. <laughs> All right, belt is off, problem solved. And we'll get back to it and we'll just add it as we go, I think it's probably the safe bet. Sounds very good. Okay. All right, so we're gonna be adding a 50 pound bag of beet pulp and a 50 pound bag of our FBN mix. So let me fire her back up and we'll get to rolling. on mixing out there, but really quick, we're going to take a look at our ingredients list uh, for our FBN, FBN uh, additive. I'm going to turn over here so we can actually see what we're doing. So basically what FBN did for us was they took our feed, uh, both our hay and the corn oats and barley that we're feeding the fit on, and they did a nutritional analysis. They started looking at what was missing from that mixture that the cows really need, that those steers really need to put on weight, to be healthy, and of course, to be happy. So what we came up with uh, was a mixture of calcium, salt, magnesium, potassium, cost, copper, selenium, zinc, and lysine, which is mainly used to help the digestive process in those cows. So that's what we've got working for us with FBN. You can check them out at FBN.com. All kinds of cool nutritional stuff there for you cattle producers, farmers, uh, backyard farmers, hobby farmers, homesteaders, whatever you want to call yourself, they are there to help you out. Put a team of experts in your back pocket with FBN, just like we did. Okay, so now we're, we're done putting that in. We're gonna go ahead and fold this piece back up, and put it down. There's a little tiny thing here, so you got it. I'm gonna pull this, you got the weight. 
Let her down. Oh, a little bit in. There we go. Okay, so that's folded up and out of the way. So that pin that we were screwing on with earlier, I think what we can do with that is pull that pin out now and just let it mix for a while. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Just let it run and just mix everything all together. This thing, uh, we're gonna have to pull that apart, figure out what's going on there, but I think uh, I think this will work. So we pull this pin. Can you hold on to this, Jeff? So this pin now can come out. That'll turn off our hammers and everything. And the other thing I was thinking is the reason they have the feed for the supplement back here might be because you don't want your supplement to go through the grinder and beat the crap out of it. I don't know, not for sure. But anyway, okay, I've got that pin pulled. So now, if you go around to the side and you watch the window, you should be able to see it's still circulating. So we've let it mix for about 20 minutes. I really don't know how to tell when it's done mixing, but uh, we're gonna say it's done. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and put it right back in the bag that it came in. It's all mixed up and ready to go to feed the steers. this lever to engage our auger that's our output once I start it up though you're gonna have to like crack this door speed yeah so we want it just barely trickling out of there to start with and we don't want to open it too fast so yeah no I think it's just a, a pull to slide thing <laughs> it's got a lot of pressure on it How yeah it does slide? I don't know oh it'll slide Okay.
Well, Jeff, we're done. We have now mixed 2,000 pounds of feed, actually about 2,100 pounds because of our additives, and uh, ground it up a little bit. And I think we can actually bypass the hammers completely next time yeah. if we're smarter about this. But I got to tell you, it's better than a concrete mixer. Um, oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah, no doubt. This is going to be really nice. So this 2,000-pound uh, uh, bag will be going into our... Um, little grain bin over there as soon as we get it emptied out and uh, no more mixing so this is something to look forward to yeah I and then we just got to figure out how often we have to do this uh, yeah and how much is fun it's going to be when it's like you know four degrees out here yeah that's, that, that yeah. might be a different thing might be a cab tractor <laughs> <laughs> not that you get to spend much time in the tractor uh, we'll figure out our supplement bin we did i did realize part of our problem was that you're supposed to add the supplement first which makes sense because then it's not pushing against everything else that's already in the bin and i think that's probably why we smoke that that belt that's why you should read the instructions first uh, but other than that i think we're we're pretty much good to go we can fold this thing away and uh park it for now and uh that's pretty much it you got it handled and then, yeah we'll close up the bag we'll, yeah perfect all right thanks man wow that's gonna make life so much easier i really do want to thank uh brian and cole sunny farms for uh taking the time out of their day, not only to uh, to help us get it loaded, but also Brian's help in actually finding this machine. Uh, we went to him, we said, hey, this is what we're thinking about looking for, and he's in the area where you can find it. You can't find this stuff in Northeast Wyoming. I've never seen one of these before. Obviously, I've never ran one before, but we are learning as we go, and this will make our whole operation way more, way more efficient so thank you very much to sunny farms head on over to their youtube page check them out for yourself subscribe uh, and thanks to artsway rachel and travis who had a chance to come up from the main office of artsway to show us how this thing works talk a little bit about its history and of course uh, we thank those guys as well and thanks to you for coming along exploring the ranch life and escaping your ordinary we'll see you next time right here on our wyoming life it's a mighty fine grain you made I didn't expect to be quite that excited about it, but <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs>